Question 2. The strength of interaction between particles determines whether they are solid, liquid or gas. Okay, part A. Given lithium sulfide and its melting point is 938, when the melting point is high, so we know that the structure most likely is giant. It just either is a giant molecular or giant ionic or metallic. It depends on the compound. So since uh, lithium and sulfide, no metal and non-metal, and high melting point, okay, so it's most likely is giant ionic. Some more, the last sentence already told us that it conduct electricity when it is molten. Means, once it's melt, it has these uh, cations and anion, which able to bring the charge. Okay, so we are quite sure that lithium sulfide is ionic, ionic compound. Okay, part one, give the formula of particles present in the solid of lithium sulfide. Okay, lithium positive and S2 negative. Okay, this sulfide ion. Okay, part two, explain in terms of the structure of the crystalline solid structure. So we must at least put giant structure. It has a giant ionic structure and there are many strong forces between the cation and anion or you just say ionic bonds. Okay, that's the reason why it has a high melting point because it has giant ionic structure. In the structure there are a lot of ionic bonds. Okay, part B. Carbon monoxide okay, is a gas and it has coordinate bonds. Okay, part 1. Explain what means by coordinate bond. Very easy. Share pair of electrons are provided from the same species or atom. So means one atom if you if you share a pair of electrons, okay, two other species normally is share one each but when it's the dative bond or coordinate bond the two electrons will share by the same species okay this we call coordinate bond okay draw a dot cross diagram for the uh, carbon monoxide just the outer electrons only so first you need to make sure the total number of electrons is 10. Carbon has 4 valence electron, oxygen is has 6 valence electron. Means in your diagram, the dot cost diagram, you must show 10 electrons there. And we know that carbon has 4 valence electron. So it will share two electrons with oxygen. Oxygen also will share two electrons with it from two bondings. Okay, and there is a coordinate bond okay, between C O and these electrons you must show that is from oxygen. Okay, oxygen in this diagram is stored. So you must put two dots here to show that these two electrons is from the oxygen and share with the carbon now. And of course you have to put a pair of electrons okay, on the carbon and another lone pair on oxygen. Therefore, the carbon and oxygen now, they can form octet together. Each of the elements now is has 8 electrons after sharing. Okay, part C. Nitrogen is also a gas at room temperature and pressure. Okay, um, the CO and N2, they are not really ideal gas. Okay, state two assumptions that are made about behavior of uh, particles in ideal gas. Uh, this is the kinetic gas theory. 
the three most significant theory that you must remember is okay, first the gas particles volume is negligible compared to the total volume of container okay, so let's say the container is this the particle is just very very tiny partic tiny things okay in the container and its volume is very small compared to the volume of the container that's why okay in the gas theory or the assumption we assume the gas particles volume is negligible another one is the we assume the attractions between particles also negligible means there is no attractions between the particles means all the particles in the container here they will not really interact with each other no bondings form between them now, there is the another theory another assumption of course you can put another assumption which is this collision between the particles they are elastic or you can say collision between the particles and the walls are elastic Okay, these are the three most significant assumptions that you must remember. Part 2. Explain why N2 does not behave as either gas at very high pressure. So we know that when pressure is high, volume is small, will be lower. When the volume is lower, means now the forces, forces between the particles now is more significant because they can meet with each other more frequent and they can interact with each other easily and of course when the volume is lower or smaller and the particles volume no longer negligible it becomes significant now because when the volume okay, that the particles stay it's reduced so the volume of particle itself is significant, means no longer negligible. Okay, part three, complete the table by naming all type of intermolecular force. Intermolecular force, okay, we have three types. IDID, PDPD, and hydrogen bonds. And now it's want you to list out all the types that possible okay, in nitrogen and CO. Okay, first we need to know whether this molecule they are polar or non-polar. Okay, nitrogen, we know that is non-polar molecules because zero net dipole. And therefore, in nitrogen, it just has ID ID only instantaneous dipole induced di di induced dipole. Okay, only one when the was force. The carbon monoxide difference. Carbon monoxide is a polar molecule because the C and O they have different electronegativities. So it will form dipoles. And the net dipole is not zero. And therefore it's going to have two type of van der Waals force so it can has the it can have the this uh, id id because the c and o they have some electrons there as long the molecule has electron if you if you have instantaneous dipole induced dipole forces other than this id id because it's a polar molecule, it can form permanent dipole, permanent dipole with another molecule. Let's say now there is another molecule here. Partial positive, partial negative. So they will form PD, PD forces. So means in this CO, there are two types of intermolecular force. ID, ID, and PD, PD. Part 4. Suggest why the bond in the molecule of CO, okay, it contains dipole moment, means the net dipole, okay, because 
okay, they have different electron negativity or you can say oxygen is more electron negative than carbon okay, that's all for this question thank you